Michael Knowles gets triggered by people going to SatanCon. I love this. In Boston over the weekend, a bunch of Satanists met up in what is now being called the largest gathering of Satanists ever. It was called Satan Con. Big conference for Satanists. They're making a lot of satanic symbols, wearing lots of pentagrams and weird goat head imagery and horns and stuff, looking like a bunch of weirdos and doing really bad things. They're uh, shredding Bibles. Ooh, yeah, I forgot how evil it is to shred a Bible. They were, they were engaging in, they were performing unbaptizing ceremonies, which is not possible. Baptism leaves uh, an, an indelible mark on the soul. <laughs> yeah, baptism leaves a magical mark on the soul. But these jokers think they can unbaptize you. They were uh, shredding pro-cop flags, you know, the thin blue line, blue lives matter. They were promoting transgenderism. They were promoting abortion. Oh no, they're supporting human rights. They, they had talk, sins of the flesh, Satanism and self-pleasure, promoting uh, what Woody Allen euphemistically called sex with someone you love. Oh no, masturbation. The sort of thing that one does associated with pornography. Uh, they, they had a talk reclaiming the trans body. And it's, it's easy to kind of just... Oh, it's funny what he finds to be evil. People enjoying themselves and supporting human rights and doing things that they're allowed to do. And yeah, and this is supposed to be evil. Very funny mock these guys or, or even to feel a, a great deal of pity for them because you think, oh, these are just a bunch of misfit weirdos dressing up in, in goat horns and making the rock, the rock and roll symbol. And it's no big deal, but they're promoting pretty bad stuff. I mean, transing, the castrating children, that's, that's not great. That's a bad thing to promote. Nobody's castrating children. Uh, murdering babies through abortion. Nobody's murdering babies. But if you look at the Bible, there's lots of verses about killing babies. Uh, then, you, you know, you have the ten plagues, which would have killed babies. You got uh, the Great Flood, which would have killed babies. You got the uh, uh, potion of bitter waters, which is to give an abortion. You got uh, tons of passages where people go out and commit genocide against other cities killing babies and pregnant women. So, you know, the Bible is all about killing babies. It's not great. These guys raise money for abortion clinics to kill babies. So it gets, it gets pretty dark. It, it, it'd be easy to laugh at them if the consequences of this stuff were not so dire. And of course, they uh, worship the prince of lies, the father of lies. So the only reason I even bring this up. Well, it also depends on which branch of Satanism you fall under. You got a theistic Satanism. You got atheistic Satanism. Uh, it's not to call too much attention to these people, but when conservatives point out that this stuff is satanic, that these ideas that seem like they're just ordinary political issues. Right, because supporting human rights is very satanic to Christians. That's why they hated the idea of uh, freeing the slaves, women having rights, black people having rights. All that is considered satanic. Gay people existing and having rights, that's considered satanic. We want to take down the cops, abolish the police. Well, we want to allow men who think they're women to just dress up like women, and they really are women, and we're going to establish in our law that they're really women. We want women to have choice. And <laughs> yeah, okay. A police reform is good. How is that satanic? Uh, people being able to dress however they want as they feel. How is that satanic? Women having choice. He doesn't think women should have choices in anything. Uh, this is probably just about abortion. How's that satanic? 
and have the right to control their own bodies by murdering their children. We yeah, women should have the right to control their own bodies. But Michael Knowles think men should have the right to control women. We, we just, we, that's what we support. And, and a lot of people, including on the right, think, oh, these are just just political issues where you have your opinion and I have my opinion. We're going to debate, maybe meet in the middle. But no, people who are serious about these issues recognize that they, they come down to good and evil. There is a satanic element to lots of these issues that are being pushed by the left. Honestly, the most satanic, if you want to use that word to describe people it would be the people on the right since they're all about uh control force um you know murdering people that they don't like or uh, forcing them out of society tucker carlson may have lost his job for pointing that out but it's so clear when conservatives point out that there is a satanic element to all of these issues, you don't need to take our word for it. The Satanists agree. People who actually worship the devil. And most normal people in the middle, they, it, it's not that they can't wrap their head around transgenderism or around abortion or around defund the police. They can't wrap their head around the fact that some people explicitly worship the devil. Uh, I mean, it's easy to wrap your head around. It's just like worshiping any uh, mythological figure. And it also, uh, the big organizer of the Satan Con was the Church of Satan or the Temple of Satan. I forgot which one, but they're like an atheistic branch. They just usually just like the mock Christians trying to force their beliefs on others. They think, well, that's a silly superstition. That's just a silly, stupid superstition. You guys, you're all jokers, okay? You people who worship the devil are jokers, and you people who go to church are jokers, and me, a bourgeois secular liberal whose most important re weekly ritual is going to brunch on Sunday and maybe going to a yoga class. I'm the reasonable one here. I can't help but point out, if you look at all of human history in every society, everywhere on earth, you see an acknowledgement of the devil and an acknowledgement of, if not the one true God, at least intuitions of the one true God, and an acknowledgement of moral reality and the idea that some things are better than other things. Uh, yeah, both. I mean, if you actually worship a, like Satan as a as a being, that's pretty dumb. You worship fictional beings, that's just pretty dumb. So who's the mistaken one? Who's the crazy superstitious one? The the people who are behaving and perceiving the world in in line with how everyone has always done so or the handful of modern secularists who think it's all just bunk and we're all just bags of meat and chemicals and our only purpose is to get pleasure and all those higher things. That's, that's funny how he's now flipping it onto secularist people. Uh, no, uh, well, you can be like uh, non-religious and, uh, and have no belief in a God and still be superstitious, believe in ghosts and stuff like that. But for the most part, uh, religious people are the more superstitious of the group. They're, they're just fanciful. To quote Antonin Scalia in an interview with a New York Magazine Lib Journo some years ago now, she was mocking him for being religious. And he said, you know, yeah, I believe in God and heaven. I even believe in hell and the devil. Many more intelligent people than you or me have believed in the devil. Are you ready to take the next step in your education? Okay, I had to skip his ad, but just because intelligent people have believed or do believe in uh, God and Satan doesn't mean they're real. What about the intelligent people that 
do not believe. Does that mean they're not real? Come on. There is no evidence of God or Satan or any divine being that has been thought of by people. Pope went and visited Hungary. Hungary, strong right-wing government, doing a lot of great stuff. Pope Francis, sometimes it talks a little bit in a confusing way. Papa Francesco was misinterpreted by La Repubblica journal, a newspaper in Italy. And he'll say things, and then sometimes the journalists are in fact misinterpreting him. Sometimes what the Holy Father says is somewhat ambiguous. But what he said in Hungary was not ambiguous at all, and it shocked a lot of liberals. I will translate what the Pope says. This is a nefarious path of ideological colonization that eliminates differences, as in the case of gender culture, which eliminates differences or, or prioritizes other things, reducing freedom, for example, uh, and creating an insane right to abortion. That is always a, a tragic defeat. Well, yeah, let's take the word of the leader of a very misogynistic and freedom-restrictive uh, uh, religion. Uh, they want to talk about, yeah, restrictions of freedom under, like, Catholicism and Christianity. There's a lot of things you wouldn't be able to do. They don't even allow, like, uh, women to be priests. They hate gay people, and they don't want you know, people to have families and stuff. Uh, you're not allowed to use birth control because that's supposed to be evil. All uh, Catholicism, Catholicism is all about extreme control. How beautiful instead would it be to build a Europe centered on people and people where effective policies for birth and family are in Europe. We have countries in Europe where the median age is 46 or 48 years old. Where we ha what if we have a country where, in which the growth and uniqueness of each individual is preserved? It's a great idea. So, The growth and uniqueness of each individual is preserved, but they don't like the idea of trans people existing or people being on the gender spectrum, having their own identity and uniqueness. In there, he comes out in favor of Hungary's initiative to increase birth rates in Europe, comes out against abortion, articulates that this is insane to suggest there's such a thing as a right to abortion, and he says that gender ideology is, is crazy, that it's an ideological colonization that's contrary. Right, right. Um, unlike Christianity, which, which isn't uh, an ideological colonization tool. Uh, and, you know, Christianity has been forced upon people uh, uh, via violence, sword, or some other means. Prairie to reality. But this is a liberal pope. What do you mean, the liberal pope? Is opposed to abortion? Yes, because the church has taught consistently from day one that abortion is completely unacceptable. We see this in the Bible. We see this in the commandment against committing murder. Well, now if you look at the potion of bitter waters, that allows for uh, abortion. And there's many other, many other verses where God kills babies. And if anything God does is good, then that means killing babies is good. We see this in the scriptural defenses of children. We also see this in the Didache, that earliest catechism of the church, going back to the earliest days of the church. What about gender theory? Well, we see this in the Bible. In the beginning, God created man, both male and female created he them. We see this in the complementarity of the sexes, in the description of marriage in Genesis and in the Gospel of St. Matthew. And we see this throughout the history of the church. So you could say, yes, Pope Francis is liberal. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that, that Pope Francis really no, he is not liberal. There has never been a liberal pope, and there will never be a liberal pope. Billy is desirous of upending church teaching on gender ideology, but he's merely constrained by tradition. I, I totally take the pope at his word. I think he's sincere when he says he thinks abortion is insane, and he thinks that gender ideology is crazy and a colonization, and he says it's good to have young people being born. But why is it that the pope would think that? 
And why would he advocate for that, even when he has a reputation as a liberal? Because there is no way to overcome not only the clear scripture, but that, that weight of history. This is why the libs have to attack history. This is why the libs have to turn your eyes away from history. This is why the libs have to get you to focus only on your unfettered reason and you as an individual totally divorced from So that's the guy who's divorced from like history and reality uh, because, uh, you know, the Bible is not 100% history. They may have some locations and stuff that's real, but majority of it is fake. From your family, from your local community, from your nation, from your democracy, and from what Chesterton would call that, that greatest democracy of all, the democracy of the dead, which is not merely confined to people who happen to be walking about the earth at this time. That, that segment is going to give you a lot to think about. It's giving me a lot to think about, even hearing it again. Wow. Nah, uh, it was just completely stupid. Uh, you guys know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe. Peace out. Drop a comment if you have anything to say.